Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, it may be afternoon or evening for you right now. But hello and how are you today? I pray you're all blessed and doing well. Okay, today is Saturday, November the 7th. For some reason, I thought yesterday was the 7th. But no, it was <laughs> just the 6th. Anyway, it's like 10, 12 a.m. Okay. Um, I was praying this morning to the Lord and then asked him, What would you like me to read today, Lord? And I got Zechariah chapter 4. And I was like, Did you say 4? You want me to read Zechariah 4? And I didn't hear anything for a second. And I said, Lord, I need to hear from you. Did I hear you right? Did you say Zechariah 4? And in my mind, I heard Zechariah 4. <laughs> so, okay, I went there. I ended up reading three chapters. And they do have to do with the end days. So, I'm going to share them with you. All right. This chapter 4 starts off with a section called the golden lamp stand and olive trees where do we hear about them maybe in the book of revelation lamp stand in heaven the two golden the two olive the two olive trees hmm let's move on and read this, shall we then the angel who was speaking with me returned and roused me as a man who is awakened from his sleep. And he said to me, What do you see? And I said, I see, and behold, a lampstand, all of gold, with its bowl on the top of it, and its seven lamps on it with seven spouts <clears throat> belonging to each of the lamps which are on top of it. Also, two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl and the other on its left side. Now, I was trying to imagine this in my mind because I thought a lamp stand I guess a singular, I guess I was thinking of a menorah. But a lampstand is just for lighting. For lighting. Like a lamp. Like we use lamps with bulbs. They use these so they could pour oil in it. And it would light up the place. So I'm going to find a picture of this to use as a custom thumbnail. Anyway, the seven lamps on it with seven spouts, spouts belonging to each of the lamps which are on top of it. Each of the lamps which are on top of it. So if it has seven spouts, seven spouts, then it sounds like a menorah, doesn't it? Also, Two olive trees by it, one on the right side of the bowl, which sounds to me like the bowl is on the top in the middle. Well, it wouldn't be on one of the others, would it? And the other on the left side. Then I said to the angel who was speaking with me, saying, What are these, my lord? So the angel who was speaking with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my lord. <laughs> That's kind of like me. I said, What are these, lord? <laughs> then he said to me, This is the word of the lord to Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. 
What are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become... Wait a minute. Let me read that other uh, differently. What are you, O great, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain, and he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Now, grace, just pause a minute. Grace came along when Jesus died on the cross. He was our Messiah already, but when he died on the cross, rose from the dead, he fulfilled Old Testament, the New Testament laws, went into place, and along with it, grace. For it is by grace, that you are saved, for it is by grace that you are saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For it is by grace that you are saved through faith. Okay, and then on verse 10 goes on to talk about, for you are saved to do good works. All right, we mustn't ever take advantage of the wonderful gift of grace. Okay. Also, the word of the Lord came to me saying, now we're on verse 8. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, and his hands will finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? But these seven will be glad when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord, which range to and fro throughout the earth. He can look across from one end to the other. Think about that for a minute. That's how I see it, okay? Then I said to him, What are these two olive trees on the right? of the lampstand and on its left. And I answered the second time and said to him, What are the two olive branches which are beside the two golden pipes which empty the golden oil from themselves? It does sound like a menorah, doesn't it? So he answered me, saying, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, my Lord. And then he said, These are the two anointed ones who are standing by the Lord of the whole earth. Moving on to chapter 5. The Flying Scroll. All right. Wait a minute, let me pause. The two anointed ones standing by the Lord of the earth. All right. Let me back down to that verse. These are, I firmly believe, these are the ones who are going to be the two witnesses. They're also called sons of fresh oil. All right. I believe they're Enoch and Elijah. Because even though they have a glorified body, which cannot be killed, the two witnesses are going to have to be able to not be killed for three and a half years. The only way that can happen is for them to be glorified already. 
like we will be the first fruits when we go outside of time, when we're snatched away, when we are raptured, we are rescued from all these things that are to happen upon the earth. We get our glorified body. We will be like these two who stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now, if the two witnesses were two humans, like that guy in Africa claims he's the only one. And uh, boy, howdy. That guy's something else. Well, anyway, um, let's say they're two humans. They can be shot and killed. Let's say God protects them. God puts them, you could say, well, God will protect them. He'll make the bullets just bounce off. Well, yes, God could do that. And then, then there's the point comes when they are killed and they lay in the streets three and a half days. And the whole world will see them. How can the whole world see them? By television. The World Television Network... <laughs> If you want to call it that the new world television network will they will have tv they will have their chosen programs playing and the news they want you to hear playing and they will rejoice sent people will send each other presents because the two witnesses have been killed well that could be they could be like in a coma <laughs> i mean God can make it look like they're dead. But that's just that's my my interpretation that it's Enoch and Elijah. Certainly God could take two people that are human that it could be part of the ones who are raptured get a glorified body, get sent back. It could be two of them. The point is, God will protect them, even if it's just two humans living on the earth now that he has chosen to be his two witnesses. He could certainly protect them. And they could certainly die a human death and be rose, risen from the dead, just like Jesus. Okay, let's move on. I just wanted to kind of expound on that for a minute. All right, this section is titled The Flying Scroll. Then I lifted up my eyes again and looked, and behold, there was a flying scroll. And he said to me, What do you see? And I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits, and its width, 10 cubits. Now, a cubit, let me tell you, is they measure things from the length of a man's arm to his tip of his longest finger. The average person, average man, it, they say it equaled approximately 18 inches. So that's one and a half feet. So this scroll is, let's see, where is it now? 20 cubits is 30 feet. So it's 30 feet long and 15 feet wide. Okay, if that helps you to see how big it was. Then he said to me, this is the curse that is going forth over the face of the whole land. Surely everyone who steals will be purged away according to the writing on one side, and everyone who swears will be purged away according to the writing on the other side. Now I thought to myself, of all the sins that people commit, I'm kind of surprised that he would say everyone who steals and everyone who swears will be purged away. 
that's taken the name of the Lord in vain. And that was one of the Ten Commandments, wasn't it? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. All right, so now the, the New Testament law Jesus gave is love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. If you're doing that, you're not going to take the name of the Lord your God in vain because you love him. You see, it covers all these other things. Now, how is he going to deal with all the other sins? Well, the book of Revelation gets into that. Right now, he's telling uh, Zechariah that the, this flying scroll, if you can imagine, like a magic, <laughs> what do you call it, those, the cartoon with the Aladdin and his magic rug, you know, flying... <laughs> That, that's how I see it. This thing is flying around the sky, you know. Uh, there is no such thing as a magic rug, of course. <laughs> they teach kids the dumbest things in those shows. Dumb and wrong. Okay. So, verse 4 says, I will make it go forth, declares the Lord of hosts. And it will enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name and it will spend the night within that house and consume it with its timber and stones. In other words, the homes of those who do these things will be somehow destroyed. Then the angel who was speaking with me went out and said to me, Lift up now your eyes and see what this is going forth. And I said, What is it? And he said, This is the ephah going forth. Now the footnote says it's approximately one view. It's like a big woven basket. And this particular one has a lid made of lead. All right, so this is an ephah going forth. Again, he said, this is their appearance in all the land. The word appearance says some ancient versions read iniquity. This is their iniquity in all the land or earth, in all the earth. And behold, a lead cover was lifted up and this is a woman sitting inside the ephah. Interesting. So that tells you how the size of this thing. Not a little basket. It's pretty big. You know, probably three or four feet across, I would guess, if a woman could lay down in it. Then he, then he said, this is wickedness. And he threw her down into the middle of the ephah and cast the lead weight on its opening or mouth, the mouth of it. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and there were two women, and there were, and there two women were coming out with the wind in their wings, and they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heavens. Hmm, strange vision, huh? And I said to the angel, or maybe it wasn't a, a vision, but I take it that he's showing him a vision. I said to the angel who was speaking with me, 
where are they taking the ephah? Then he said to me, to build a temple for her in the land of Shinar. And when it is prepared, she will be set there on her own pedestal. Now, temple is literally house, to build a house for her in the land of Shinar. And when it is prepared, she will be set there on her own pedestal. On to chapter 6. Now this is interesting. It's titled, The Four Chariots. Now I lifted up my eyes again, and looked, and behold, four chariots were coming forth from between the two mountains, and the mountains were bronze mountains. Bronze. Bronze in color, or literally. Anyway, four chariots were coming forth from between the two mountains, and the mountains were bronze mountains. With the first chariot were red horses. With the second chariot, black horses. With the third chariot, white horses. And with the fourth chariot, strong dappled horses. Then I spoke and said to the angel who was speaking with me, What are these, my lord? Aren't you all wondering right now? What are those for? <laughs> the angel replied to me, These are the four spirits of heaven going forth after standing before the Lord of all the earth. So this is a heavenly thing come to earth, come to earth with one of which the black horses are going forth to the north country and the white ones go forth after them while the dappled ones go forth to the south country now, it doesn't mention the red ones. It says, what are these, my Lord? They're four spirits of heaven going forth after standing before the Lord, one of which the black horses are going to the north, the white ones go forth after them, while the dappled ones go forth to the south country. doesn't mention the red ones. Maybe it does later. I read through this. I don't remember it. When the strong ones went out, that's the dappled ones, they were eager to go. The footnote says, sought to go. To patrol or walk about through the earth. And he said, capital H, he, go patrol the earth. Walk about through the earth. That's the Lord saying, go patrol the earth. And they patrolled the earth. Then he cried out to me and spoke to me saying, See, those who are going to the land of the north have appeased my wrath in the land of the north. Or literally, caused my spirit to rest in. Caused my spirit to rest in the land of the north? Hmm. They have appeased my wrath in the land of the north. The word of the Lord also came to me saying, Take an offering from the exiles, from Heldai, Tobijah, and Jediah, and you go the same day and enter the house of Josiah, 
the son of Zephaniah, where they have arrived from Babylon, the exiles. Okay, and they have arrived from Babylon. So it sounds to me like these are the ones who were held captive in Babylon, and they were released and went back to, to Israel. From Heldai, Tobijah, Jediah. And you go the same day and enter the house of Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. Okay. Oh, wait. Let me move on. The symbolic crowns. Take silver and gold. Make an ornate crown. And set it on the head of Joshua. Do you know what Joshua means? Yeshua. Let me look it up. Joshua. Yehoshua. It's H3091. It's pronounced. Let me show you the pronunciation. Strong's H three thousand ninety one. Yehoshua. Yehoshua. And second entry. Yehoshua. Yehoshua. Okay. I would think A H would be ah, but anyway, when you move down, it says it's translated in the following manner: Joshua. Or Jehoshua, which means Jehovah is salvation. So I thought it literally Jehovah saved, Jehoshua means, i.e., Joshua, the Jewish leader, Jehoshua. Jehoshua, another spelling, Joshua, that's, that's, I thought it would, well, it did basically say Yahushua, he just pronounced it differently. All right, so moving on back to where we were, so they got to make a crown, an ornate crown, and set it on the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Who is our high priest? Jesus. Then say to him, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, a man whose name is Branch, or Spout, Sprout, Sprout, who's, that's the literal interpretation, whose name is Branch, for he, capital H, will branch out from where he is, and he will build the temple of the Lord. Yes, it is he who will build the temple of the Lord. And he who will bear the honor and sit and rule on his throne. See, this is future tense. This is not talking about what's going to happen before Jesus came back. Or even what they're fixing to do now. Try to make another temple. When the One World Trade Center is the third temple. And it will be destroyed. Okay, let's back up. This is verse 13, chapter 6, verse 13. Yes, it is he <clears throat> who will build the temple of the Lord, and he who will bear the honor and sit and rule on his throne. Thus he will be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace will be between the two offices. 
which is literally of them. So the council of peace will be between the two of them. The two of them. Hmm. I am not sure what that means. The two of who? Will there be two special people, maybe the witnesses? If they're already standing up in heaven by the Lord of hosts, why not in his temple in the new millennial reign, the thousand-year millennial reign? It's very possible. Now, the crown will become a reminder in the temple of the Lord to Helam, Tobijah, Jediah, and Hen, the son of Zephaniah. And Hen is literally Josiah. Why don't they just put Josiah? Why put Hen? That's a female chicken. Anyway. Moving on. Those who are far off will come and build the temple of the Lord. Far off? Those who are far off. See, everyone is going to come to Israel to live either in it or near it. Because they got to go celebrate tabernacles with Jesus every year. So I live as far away as you can from there, right? All right, so those who are far off will come and build the temple of the Lord. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. And it will take place if you completely obey the Lord your God. See, the Bible is full of if you do this, then I will do that. Nothing is automatic. Just because you said the salvation prayer one day and then maybe even followed up with baptism and you lived right for a while. Still, maybe you're still living right. But if you do not repent of your sins daily because we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God, we will never have a perfect day. If you think about it, there are days when I think, Okay, I know I need to repent of my sins, but I, I don't remember any. So I just say, Lord, whatever I have said or done or failed to do that grieved you, please forgive me, okay? Because there might have been one thing I failed to do or something I said that I didn't realize would, would grieve the Lord. All right, let's move on. Um, this, this is the end of six. So one more. I felt led to read seven. Hearts like flint is the title of this section. In the fourth year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah on the fourth day of the ninth month, which is Chislev. And I was wondering, aren't we like, two months different or maybe it changes because they go by lunar months where we go by 30 days approximate 30 31 one day is 28 or 29 so it's always off but i was thinking that we were in the ninth month let me look it up that the fourth is past already so Maybe it doesn't matter, but I'm interested. When is Chislev? C. Whoops. My cursor moved. C-H-I-S. Chislev. 2020. The month of Kislev. Now they have it spelt Kislev. 
your home for Jewish education. I want to know when Chislev is. Kislev. Search results. Okay, I can't read that. Well, I could spend a long time looking. I thought it would just tell me right off the bat when it's Chislev. But they're spelling it Kislev. All right. So if somebody would like to research that and put it in the comments, that would be wonderful. All right. So anyway, in the fourth year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah on the fourth day of the ninth month, which is Chislev or Kislev. Now the town of Bethel had sent Sherezer and Regemelech and their men to seek the favor of the Lord. Speaking to the priests who belonged to the house of the Lord of hosts and to the prophets, saying, Shall I weep in the fifth month and abstain as I have done these many years? Okay, I read this out of my Bible. And this is not worded the same, although it's the NASB. Abstaining or dedicating myself. My word said fasting. Shall I weep in the fifth month and fast? is what it said, but this says abstain. Now, how come that is? As I have done these many years, then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Can you imagine God speaking to you like this? Some people do hear from the Lord like this, and it's so awesome. Say to all the people of the land and to the priests, when you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months, these 70 years, was it actually for me that you fasted? Do you fast and pray? Do you fast for the Lord? Or is it a ritual you've gotten yourself into? He said, when you eat and drink, do you not eat for yourselves, and do you not drink for yourselves? Are not these the words which the Lord proclaimed by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited and prosperous along with its cities around it, and the Negev and the foothills were inhabited? Negev is south country, and the foothills is... Shephiah. I never heard of that. The foothills of Jerusalem were inhabited. Then the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, saying, Thus has the Lord of hosts said, Dispense true justice and practice kindness and compassion each to his brother. And do not oppress the widow or the orphan or fatherless. The stranger, which is also resident alien. Not as an alien UFO alien. Alien as in person from another country. <laughs> of course you knew that. The stranger or the poor, and do not despise evil, do, sorry, do not devise evil in your hearts against one another. But they refused to pay attention, and turned a stubborn shoulder, and stopped their ears from hearing. Boy, howdy, is that the truth? That's what's going on right now. People just might go to church and hear the word, but they're hearers of the word only and not doers. They made their hearts like flint 
so that they could not hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit to the former prophets. Therefore, great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. And just as he called and they would not listen, so they called and I would not listen, says the Lord of hosts. This scripture proves right here, if you have sin in your heart and you're praying and you're not repenting of it and you are praying for something, maybe spare my wife, she's dying, Lord. Spare my son, he's dying, Lord. Help me get this job, Lord. I really, really need this job bad. Lord, my car is just falling apart. I need you to help me get a better car. It doesn't even have to be new, Lord. Just a better car. But you have unrepentant sin in your heart. He says here, I would not listen. And just as he called, and they would not listen, so they called, and I would not listen says the Lord of hosts. God does not change. The laws changed. Yes, they did. But God does not change. Verse 14. But I scattered them with a storm wind among all the nations whom they have not known. Thus, the land is desolated behind them so that no one went back and forth for they made the pleasant land desolate. You know, after 70 AD, this prophecy was fulfilled. Israel was desolate and People came and squatted on it and would leave. And, I mean, it was not, it wouldn't grow things. It was like a desert. It was desolate. That's how America will be because the Americans have refused to listen to the God of the Bible. They listen to the God of these chicken soup for the soul. And people like Joel Osteen and Kenneth Copeland and others who, how would you say it, candy-coated the Gospels, lied outright with the, like, uh, what's his name, that pretty boy, Joseph Prince. Not to be confused with Derek Prince. Joseph Prince preaches a grace and only grace gospel. He teaches people to trample on the grace of God. It's a once saved, always saved kind of a gospel. It sounds real good. He's real fun to listen to as far as, you know, what he's saying. But we have to accept all of the truth, even the parts that sound hard to do. The Lord said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For I am meek and humble in heart. Because my yoke is easy. He said, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. I'll find that for you. And that was the end of that chapter. Come. There it is. Matthew eleven twenty eight 
and 29. This is the King James Version. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. So the, when you follow the Lord, he's not saying it will be easy. His yoke is lighter than taking on the yoke of the burdens of the world without him. You may have more fun drinking, partying, doing the things you love to do that don't have anything to do with God and leaving him out except for Sunday church and Wednesday night services. But that's not showing that you love him most. We must love him the most. And get out of the world. Get out of worldly entertainment. That's all I have for now. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Over all of us. Each and every one of us. That watches this video. And myself. And I plead the blood of Jesus over all of our devices. And our internet connections. And with that I'll say bye for now. God bless you all. I'll talk to you later.